Hello, welcome back to my channel. And um, here you can see I've started on a car, but I just wanted to show you that sponge is like a 600 grit on one side and then the other side's just kind of like a sponge. But I actually sand down straight across one way, then down the opposite way, then straight across again. And then I dust it off and clean it off before I begin painting, but I didn't show you how I laid it out. I sketched it on uh, the panel, the aluminum panel, and then I used a stencil to go over top of it, and then I cut it out. And I'm showing you the stencil that I used. They make it in clear, and they make it in a blue. I, I like it because it's low tack, but I wish it was thinner. It's kind of thick, and uh, I just think it would be a lot better, more like thinner, like frisket. But frisket is so tacky to me that it's just hard finding the right thing that you like to use. But this is working okay for me as long as I have a sharp uh, blade in my X-Acto knife. When I start out, then it, it goes pretty smooth. Um, and I had already airbrushed in some um, uh, green for the grass, just a background color, and then it's gravel where the car is setting, so some light blues, a little bit of specks of black in there. Um, I used the vermilion uh, green and yellow in that to get this color of the grass, and uh, I'm using cobalt blue very very lightly right now to go around the rims. Process of building up and erasing out as normal. And I do use my dowel on this and I use um, my Mars eraser. This car turned out pretty good, but um, I don't know. I, I think uh, to get a thin thinner line when you're erasing out, I need to find like a small, like a pencil size, I guess, um, wooden dowel and then sharpen it to where it's just barely, barely really thin at the end so you can get like a um, just a hairline when you scratch out that's the exacto blade I don't really like using it on the aluminum panels um, but I will but sometimes you can really you can end up scratching it if you're not real careful I guess that's why I don't like using it but if I need that really thin line, I will use it. I think I lightened um, the cobalt blue. I lightened it a little bit in the the rims because um, chrome has a lot of different shadowing in it. There's blues, there's blacks, there's grays, there's white. It's not just one solid color depending on what it's reflecting off of. So um, here you see me going in with my dowel and erasing out some areas. That's actually the, I think, you know, I use just old paint brushes and I sharpen the ends of them. And a pencil sharpener. And you can actually get a smaller, I guess, paint brush and sharpen the end for the, um, a thinner line, which I need to do. <laughs> And 
and I'm just erasing out some areas where it will be brighter. And then, of course, you know, you spray back over that. It's just a process. And those lettering that you see around the tire, they're just little marks of white of where I used my eraser and went in and just erased out some little, little specks here and there. You can't read what it says, but it gives the impression that there's writing on the tires. I just realized I didn't put that in the back one when I needed to do that. Hmm. car is a 1968 Mercury Cougar. I love Cougars. And this was an older type one. They just don't make cars the way they used to. I realize when you're going across for like chrome um, with the eraser instead of erasing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it is so much better if you just use a precise line and stay in the line that you want for like the round area there on the chrome. I could be erasing back and forth and I am in a few areas there, but when around the rim the, the that makes the circle I'm trying to be very precise and not get off a little bit because just a little bitty nick you can if someone was to magnify it you'd be able to tell that you know it was erased out or something was used on it and I, do, I don't like that look and so I have done this before too which um, really kind of adds a little bit of depth to your artwork. Once you're done with uh, the overall background of everything, the car, the grass, the gravel, the whatever, and it looks almost completely finished, but you might be unhappy with the chrome here and there because of erasing and stuff, it just doesn't, you know, for some reason, you're not happy with it. So, I have went ahead and cleared it. Um, automotive clear or just a spray can of clear. And if you do use a spray can, make sure that it has a non-yellowing uh, UV in it. Because you do not want your artwork to be um, damaged by the sun. But I spray a couple coats, let it dry. And then I come back in again, same paint, acrylic airbrush paint, and touch up areas in it. And I even use a brush, sometimes a very, very, very thin brush. And I have picked hairs out of a brush to where I only have like two or three hairs. And um, I will get that mixture of paint and then outline or touch up where it just looks like I've erased out and there's little specks here and there. And those of you who have done this a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then I clear it again and it, it turns out awesome. So there's a little tip for you if you're just, if you're not completely happy and there's some little areas that you want to touch up, uh, clear it and then touch it up again you could probably do that as many times you wanted to, but sometimes when you're trying to get a 3D effect, um, 
And that is all time and money. If the person really wants to pay, I live in a small town. People don't like to buy art. So, you know, if they really wanted a absolute 100% realistic 3D effect, they're going to pay for it. And most people where I'm at won't do that. But if I was to do that, I would do the layering effect. It's um, you, you spray it, you, you paint over areas, you spray it again, you come back and paint more over the area and start building on the whole car to where it just looks like it's going to pop out at you. I suppose you could do that with a person too, portrait, but. Here I'm spraying in a little bit of gray in there. Looks black, but it's not. And I got some squiggly lines down below, but you can always, you know erase that out but we have to have those gray and dark areas in there for it to look like chrome and I think I will re erase the dark lines where I traced out the car Usually, when you lay your stencil on there, you can see that through your stencil. So, you always have that line where you can cut. You know what you're cutting out at. But before I, um, before I paint on airbrush on the car, I usually will go in there and erase uh, the dark, dark lines. That way, it doesn't pop out the paint most of the airbrush paint will cover most of the lines but it still leaves you an area where you can see what you're doing but of course you don't want those pencil lines showing through your airbrush paint so you want it to be light i think i'm using my takumi Looks like my Takumi. Again, everybody swears by this airbrush. And it is the number one most sought after airbrush. And I'm not saying it's not good. I just, for me, I just prefer the, uh, I don't like side cups. It's just an extra little area to clean out. And uh, I just don't like side cups. I have my, I, I prefer the Creos PS 77 one or 771. That's my airbrush I prefer, but I wish it had a smaller cup on the top. So, hey, Creos guys, make a smaller cup on the top. Preferably one you can screw on and take off. That'd be nice. There I have a, a smaller dowel. Well, it's a brush, paintbrush, but it's sharpened on the end. I'm trying to get some smaller lines in there. The amount of time you can put in a piece of artwork is just beyond me. <laughs> but overall, I suppose this car could, this car could have been done in a full day, eight hours. I just worked on it a couple, 
couple, um, about three days total, but I was in my shop maybe four hours the first time. Uh, maybe three the second time. And then the third time was a couple hours just to finish it up. So that wasn't too bad. But you can see just doing chrome, you're going to spend a lot of time coming back in, making sure everything looks exactly like the photo or close to the photo. And I think I got that on my, um, it's posted under community on my YouTube channel. There's a picture of the car. Sorry about my clock dingy. I forgot I turned that thing back on. But you'll get a, a photo of the car. And he, you'll notice that my car will be darker because he said it's almost a shade, but not quite. My car was a little darker, so I made it a little darker. And he had a black top, not a white top, which the photo shows a white top. So I had to paint in a black top on it. But those are just a few things you'll notice as, as I'm painting. Well, the car's a different color. Yeah, it is. And I used cobalt blue mostly on the car. And then I added um, uh, two drops of uh, violet in it to make it a little darker on the sides. And let's see. Yep, that's about it. There you see I had gotten a little overspray up on the area where the car, so I went around with the dowel and got that off and then I brushed it off. This will complete this tutorial, so stay tuned and come back. Catch you later.